Uh, so before I moved to New Zealand, I used to say I was a Yorkshireman, not an Englishman. Uh, but um, I thought you frowned at that. Yeah, you can tell by my accent I've been in New Zealand a while. Um, so when I heard Colin was coming, I thought that's great because um, yeah, I think we did it in 2012 and Colin did it in 95, so about 17 years had elapsed and we didn't know anything about the route, but we just knew that this fella called Colin Rolfe had done it. I never met the guy, but you know, I knew he was 12 foot tall and had tree trunk sized legs and all the rest of it. Um, so I wanted to debunk some myths about Colin. Uh, now he's here. So first, what, first, these are all things I've legitimately heard about you, Colin. <laughs> Number one, um, that's not up there, don't click just yet. Number one was that before your attempt, you went up with a set of shears and chopped back the leatherwood in certain areas of the route. <laughs> True or false? <laughs> false? All right. Uh, all right. No, number one then. Give us a click, Martinez. Um, you sold your bed to buy some running shoes. Is that true or false? <laughs> right. Is it because you own shoes instead? <laughs> All right, next. Um, uh, I heard a rumor that your house burnt down and you had a Powell Hut sub one hour club cap adorned with brass plaques for making it to the hut in an hour. That's the only thing you saved. No? no, anyway, next one. Um, this is one of my favourites. You regularly ran from your house in Capiti across the Tarouas to your mum's house in the Wire Wrapper, mowed the lawns, <laughs> ran back across the Tarouas, and uh, got to the pub for closing time. Not true? Slightly embellished. Run through the Quite Turkey, even tried to. All right. And the final one, you can shoot fireballs out your ass. <laughs> no? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I might, I might click from here. No worries. Uh, yeah, so just that one then. Okay, um, so yeah, I've done two SKs. First one was 2012 and then um, I did one just recently and I got asked that question a bit when I said I'm going to do it again and um, it made me think, people said you, you must be mental. So I thought, well, what, what is it about this mentality of trying to knock off that route in uh, 24 hours? That's, that's Paul Helm, by the way sort of the back and that's you Ben as well yeah Southern Cross in that um, so yeah I was, I was there in 2012 did it with Lawrence and then I knocked it off again recently in a bit, bit of a quicker time um, yeah and that's what you look like at the end so to think about doing it again um, don't, know, don't really know about that but um, yeah we basically got lost and that was quite an inspiring thing um, so these were sort of so my talk's kind of about the mental approach and what motivates you and the psychology of all this madness, I guess. Um, so they, they were sort of my motivations. What, were my, what was my capacity? It was, an, it was an opportunity to explore some new territory in training and, and on the route. And we didn't even know that we could go under 24 hours. That was quite an exciting thing because we just knew that this, this fellow that had set multiple records in the Tarouas had gone an hour under 24. And we knew we weren't quite in that league and thought, well, could we do it? Um, and yeah, there's, there's Colin on his on his SK. That's the old manga hooker hook oh, in the background, photo by Barry Durant. I think that made the the Don Post or whatever evening the front page. How about it? Um, and yeah, that's a, so that was Colin's time, 22:59. So we were thinking, Christ, that's only an hour off. Only an hour off 24. Um, be nice to do it under 24, but if if someone of his standard was just an hour under then uh, anyway so we were all a bit on those lines anyway we that was our mentality we we we, we had a, a 24 hour stick as in could we do it and then we thought to ourselves well if we were sort of touching on 23 that that became a carrot then could we and we found that quite a powerful motivator on the day because we got crap weather and uh yeah there was my that's my schedule there on um laminated piece of plastic with a pencil that's how I record things so that was a 24-hour schedule I basically just added a minute onto Colin's times um, and this one was Colin's record um, and then a place for our own times and when we were going into this there was no information like there is now I mean now I think 11 people have done it we didn't really know um, schedule wise what equated to good times and things and we had 
we had Gary Goldsworth, he's very, very impressive, 25 and a half hours. Greg Thurlow, is Greg here? No. He knocked it off in moving time about the same, but he had a kip at Herapai. Um, that kind of threw the schedule off a bit, and then we had, we had Collins as well. So that, that's how we approached it mentally. And, uh, and if there's people here being inspired, I'd say schedules are important, because if you look at it as a total, total route, becomes quite overwhelming. Um, whereas if your goal is just to get somewhere in the next hour and a half, and then if you get there and you're up on your schedule, great. If you're not, then work a bit harder. Um, yeah. That was our approach. Um, all things that are good for mentality. I like to um, see other people on the hills. It keeps me sort of buzzing a bit. Um, we got lost. Um, yeah. I did a bit of time on, and after however many days, however many hours in the hills, the march was actually quite a lovely place. So I've, I hear people sort of bad mouth in the march, and I said to them, "Do an SK, you'll find it very, very lovely after 17 hours on the ridges in the rain." So this whole sort of I got lost and um, or we got lost rather, and um, I, it, it wrangled with me because I didn't feel as though I'd achieved my potential. I knew that uh, I could go a little bit quicker. Um, so I had unfinished business. Um, and I got a big map of the tarot on my bedside. And what I did was I, I cut out my, or our split times and put them up on places on the map. And I put in Sutton's split for the bit that we cocked up on. Um, and it, it came out at 1948 and I thought, oh, do you know what? Maybe one day I'll have another go at that. Um, then I had one of them and long runs kind of went out the window. Um, <laughs> But I decided on a whim, really, to write up a 1948 schedule. And I said to myself, again, this mental approach, if I'm not, if I'm not hitting my splits at Junction Knob, I'm, I'm off to Otaki Forks and go do some shopping in Levin. And uh, because I'd not done any long runs, like I, I, I think in the, yeah, I did one run over seven hours and felt rubbish. So I got support and stayed pretty light. And that was my record card this time. So this was my 19 our 48 schedule with a space for me to write my splits in and uh, that was me at the end feeling pretty rough for my dad and Tom Middlemiss and Tom had a lovely bottle of, bottle of Jura whiskey and uh, some cold beers and pff, I could just about manage some watermelon anyway um, so it, it is a lot of a mental thing because I think I went into that second one in arguably not brilliant physical shape um, I honestly think that time's a bit soft. I think it could be smashed. I think if I put my mind to it, I could probably knock an hour off it and someone a, a lot better than me. I think that route's 14 hourable and I hope it gets done within the next decade. I honestly do think it's 14 hourable. Um, so me not being in the best physical shape and still sort of getting down the range in, in uh, that time, I, I think it's a lot to do with this. So I just wanted to sort of share my thoughts on what it is to be running in the hills. I honestly believe that if you've been in the mountains for five hours, the pain in your legs is no worse than when you've been in the hills for 22 hours. So you might as well just deal with it. <laughs> uh, I've talked about the importance of a schedule. I think it's a really powerful motivational thing to aim for your next goal rather than just, I'm trying to get to Kaito. Okay, oh shit, that's miles away. Um, what's my next goal? Right, I've got there. What's my next goal? Got there. And you're just making progress all the day. Um, get out in the hills, do some recce's of the route, try and do them at a pace that you want to go at on the day. Has Nick's cat got canola roll? That's another one. <laughs> canola roll, yeah, yeah, mental thing, a drink cry, right, yeah. Um, mm. Get familiar with your route, get yourself some good gear because if the weather craps in, which it can do in the tarot, it's always useful. Um, and crave food. Um, I read. I read Collins, well we read Collins report many a time before we had a go and one thing that struck me was the size of your bloody breakfast Colin it said something like macaroni, porridge, bacon and eggs, a curry, um, a Chinese takeaway, <laughs> four beers and whatever and then you hit the hills and it seemed like the mentality then was like big breakfast and go and um, I'm not sure it did, you know, you know. Um, so I, I, I've sort of, and people that have run with me know that I've had some pretty out there things in the hills and um, yeah, I've found things that work for me, but you've got to crave food. It's just about putting food into your body and then you've got energy. Um, and one of Martini's favorite quotes is when you're in a bit of a world of pain, think, well, at least I'm not on the couch. Um, it's great to be out there in nature. When times are tough, just look at your surroundings and think this is fantastic. 
And there's, uh, Colin touched upon the, the sort of history of this route and it's a real privilege to be sort of treading in the footsteps of people who've gone before you. And I, I honestly believe that the, the history of this route is um, quite sizable and it's only going to, the, 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 the stuff that's going on now is only going to add to that history and, and I hope it really continues. Um, and it's all, like I said, it's always positive to meet friends in the mountains. So I had a few people come up to meet me and I knew where they were going to come. Unfortunately, uh, Al was, I won't say he was late, I'll say I was early um, and he had a bit of a bag of food for me so if the warden from Anderson's hut is here I apologise for knocking your um, padlock off, um, I was on the search for calories and uh, yeah, all I could find was some canola oil um, for the next five hours which was pretty, pretty yeah, it's high energy put it that way. Um, <laughs> And then you've always got the marching to look forward to, especially on a rough day. Or on a hot day, you've got a bit of shade. Um, so I firmly believe that everyone in this room with the right approach and um, obviously a physicality to take them there could do this. I don't think it's um, out of anybody's league. I think a 24 hour SK is attainable if you put mind over matter. Um, there's obviously a physicality to it, but you've got to be able to visualize yourself doing it. Um, and if your mind quits, you're out of there. Um, one thing that sort of strikes me when you see these events, which are like the, what's that one in Northburn? Yeah, where you do a lap or some of the big American races where you go back to a place of solitude and, and shelter, where you've got your food and all the rest of it, and then you've got to leave the tent and go out again. People don't leave the tent. It's in the mind. Whereas if you're on the ridges and you've no choice but to keep going, you keep going, all right? So if, you, if, you, if you're thinking of giving this a go, do so, but just be aware that there is an option at Bridge Peak to turn right to Levin for shopping. It's left for glory, right for shopping. <laughs> left, right, okay. Um, and we've had, I think this is fantastic, we've had two vets, excuse me for using the word veteran, over 50s. Uh, one of those was a male, one of those was a female. We've had two females do the route in 24 hours now. Um, as well as some sort of younger fellas and I know that there's a couple of lads in their 20s, early 20s, who are thinking of giving it a nudge this summer. So that's really positive and I, I really think that um, as long as you're not like 84 and using a Zimmer frame, I think age shouldn't be a barrier to this. Uh, so get the mental side sorted and your body will follow suit if you want to do a main range SK in under 24 hours. Uh, so that's me, I'll be back in a bit but any more info, Google that and thanks for coming and donating. We don't really have time for questions, do we? So maybe we'll just move on. Anybody got a question? How many Ks is it? Oh, well, the, the official thing's 77, but Colin said it used, used to be 110. So it used to be 110, but the mountains have shrunk. We've got a bit short now. About 80, about 80, I think. But it's not the distance, it's the climbing. They reckon it's about 7,000 metres of climbing. <laughs> right, well, I'll do them. Uh, so what we're going to do now is people, in addition to myself, who've done it in 24 hours, are going to have a bit of a talk about their experience. Yeah. All right.